Hello, um, let's watch this video together first. Okay, now let me explain. So at the beginning of the video, I was using this handphone to produce a tone and I was running a frequency analyzer app on the other handphone. So the horizontal axis is frequency. The vertical axis is intensity. So this app is showing us the frequency content of the sound that's being produced by the handphone. Now ignore all this here because this is just the background noise. So the app is telling us that the sound being produced has only one single pitch at 1000 Hz. So this is what we call a monotonic sound. Then later we were analyzing the sound produced by the guitar string. Again ignore all this here because they are background noise. So the sound produced by the guitar string are all these spikes here. Not one single frequency, many, many, many frequencies. And in fact, uh, you notice that they are equally spaced, right? So this is the fundamental frequency. And this is the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and so on. So the sound produced by the guitar is not monotonic, but the human brain will register the fundamental as the pitch of the sound. But we are able to perceive all the other harmonics. And that's why we perceive the guitar sound to be different from those monotonic sounds produced by a handphone. But now you must be wondering where did all these frequencies come from? When we pluck the guitar string, we're actually sending a triangular pulse up and down the string. Now look at this animation here. This animation is trying to show that a triangular pulse can actually be decomposed into many many sinusoidal waves of many many different frequencies. This can be proven by something called the Fourier transform. You don't have to know that. What I want you to know is, when we pluck a guitar string, we are not sending one sinusoidal wave of one single frequency up and down the string. We are actually sending many, many, many sinusoidal waves of the entire range of frequencies up and down the guitar string. So what happened to all these sinusoidal waves? Well, most of them, those with the wrong frequencies, will just destroy one another. But those that happen to be the resonant frequencies of the guitar string, they will go into resonance. So it's quite hard to imagine, but yeah, the standing waveform on the guitar string is actually, well, mainly this one because that's the fundamental, it's usually the strongest. But in addition to this one, the guitar string is also vibrating in all these manners here. So the actual vibration of the guitar string will be the superposition of all these waveforms. So what determines the pitch? Well, the length of the guitar string because it determines the resonant wavelengths, not only for the fundamental, but also for all the harmonics. So for a particular wave speed on the guitar string, that will also determine all the resonant frequencies. So basically, when we plug the guitar string, we disturb the guitar string with entire range of frequencies. But the guitar string will naturally filter away all the wrong frequencies and only keep the resonant frequencies, resulting in a particular pitch that the guitar string will produce when we pluck it. Okay, later in the video, uh, we were analyzing the sound produced by the recorder. Again, uh, it's not monotonic. This is the fundamental, then you have the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and so on. We hear the fundamental as the pitch of that sound, but we can perceive the other harmonics because it gives it the particular timbre of the sound produced. That's why different uh, instruments can give you the same pitch but they all sound different to us because the harmonics uh, contents are different. So now you should be wondering where did all these frequencies come from? So what do we have to do to produce that sound? We got to blow into the recorder, right? We got to Now, what do you think is contained in this sound? So again, if you run a frequency analyzer to analyze the frequency content of this sound, you realize that it contains an entire range of frequencies. That's why we call this the white noise. So when we blow into the recorder, we are actually sending not one single frequency sinusoidal wave, but an entire range of frequency sinusoidal waves running up and down the recorder. So again, most of these frequencies will just destroy one another. 
but the recorder, which uh, behaves like an open pipe, will naturally select the resonant frequencies because the length of the pipe will determine all the resonant wavelengths from the fundamental to all the harmonics. So for a particular wave speed at which the sound wave travels uh, in a tube, the resonant frequencies are also determined by the length of the pipe. So when you blow into the pipe, actually the air column in the pipe are doing all these vibrations at the same time. The human brain hear this as the pitch of the sound, but we hear the rest as the quality of the sound, the timbre of the sound. Alright, so a quick question for you. So now we know that the length of the pipe and the length of the string determine the resonant frequencies. So how do you play the instrument? As in, how, how, how do you change the sounds produced by the instrument? Alright, that's all. Ta-ta!